It is a good day to have a good day, right? Welcome. How are you guys this morning? Quiet? Yeah? Yeah, there you go. Shout a little bit. It's good. It's good to, good to be here today. Missed you guys last week. I hope you enjoyed uh, Pastor Matua. He's a pretty, pretty great guy, and I hate that I missed him as well, but I was out doing some other stuff. But I'm coming back this week, and I am, uh, number one, excited that you're here with us. If you're joining us online as well, um, I want to welcome you if it's your first time here. And just make sure that you, you know that uh, before you leave, we just want to shake your hand, meet you. Uh, we're really, again, just honored you're here. But if you would, before you leave today, go to this back corner, all the way on the left back here as you leave. And we just got some folks there that want to meet you, and hopefully I can get back there too to, to just greet you and thank you for being here. Um, you have joined us in the beginning of our new series that we're starting for the next three weeks. It's called This Little Light. Um, you know, it is a, have y'all ever heard that song, This Little Light of Mine? Yeah, yeah right? That's an oldie and a goodie. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll sing it sometime. Um, but anyway, This Little Light of Mine is a song that I, it just kind of hit me that uh, when I first got saved, I was going to a, uh, what I just refer to as a little country church. And, uh, and, and it was funny, I knew the people there didn't have any sense, because they asked me to come up and sing. And I thought, you are not led by the Lord, my friend, that is not my thing, but, uh, but they said, no, you got to come up here and sing, and they had a couple other guys that couldn't sing with me, so we all sounded equally terrible, um, but, but nonetheless, you know, I started to think it's, it is that make a joyful noise concept, right, and, uh, and it is uh, kind of funny how encouraging it is to one another when we see each other. Uh, shining a light. It's this idea that God has transferred and put in us something, something that he calls light. I want to spend the next few weeks talking about that. I want to talk about how uh, I would say personally, if I'm being very transparent with you, um, I have had a lot of opposition to the light in me recently. It's been a tough go. Um, Just had personal challenges, other people, situations, and stuff that make it easy to drift over into not being the light, but being tempted to let that light dim a little bit and jump into some ways that I don't believe that God would be pleased with me personally if I jumped into them. So it's been kind of a a season where I have to keep reminding myself, and that's where we land here, is like at at certain points in our life we have to go back to, because we sing this little light of mine in children's church. We sing it with children. Why? Because it's an easy song, and it's an easy concept. This little light of mine, your part. I'm going to let it shine. See? So y'all know. You remember, I'm going to let it shine. And that's for us, it's like we have to shine the light. And that's where I want to kind of start today in this series and share a few things with you. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for this word. I thank you for the light and the lamp it is to our feet. Uh, God, I pray that you would teach us through your word. God, take what seems basic and reveal what is profound. You're so good at that. Holy Spirit, I pray that you be the loudest voice, not in this, only in this room, but in the lives of each and every person that hears. God, we trust you to lead us into all truth as it pertains to scripture and righteousness. We just ask you to inhabit our time, be in it. Speak to us, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody that agrees said, amen, amen. So, you know, uh, This Little Light is not just a, a cool old ditty song. It's not just a, you know, one of them good songs, right? It is one of those good songs. But it's a, it is actually a profound, essential gift that God gives us so that we can actually best reflect his most essential character. That that might seem complicated. God gives us something, transfers to us something that helps us to represent him well. How many of y'all remember we talked about one of the main jobs of a believer is to be an ambassador? You remember that? that? That that one of the main things as a believer, one of our biggest roles is to be a representative of the one who we serve. And to represent him, you've got to be able to reflect him. You've got to be able to communicate about him, his ways. And one of the best ways we do that is when we understand and we become light bearers. The light that is in Christ becomes a light in us and we begin to jump out. So let's, let's just start out. We're going to kind of lay a foundation here as uh, Jesus calls himself 
the light of the world in John chapter 8, verse 12. He says, he says, Jesus spoke to the people once more, and he said, I am the light of the world. Now get that. Jesus says this, that he is the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, because you will have the light that leads to life. This is where Jesus first begins to convey this idea that in I am light, and if you are following me, then some of that light is going to get on and in you. I want you to grab that now, because here's, here's part of our problem. A lot of us come to faith in Christ, and, and in our minds, we don't realize that we inherit the characteristics of Christ. What we start doing is imitating the behaviors and the actions of other believers. Get this now. If we look at one another, it's like, have y'all ever played that game where one person whispers a simple message into the ear of one person? You go about 10 people down and the whole thing's different. Have y'all ever played that game? That's kind of what would happen. We would, we would begin to look at one another and imitate one another and we would have lost the essence of what Christ died to give us in the first place. So he says, look, if you follow me, you don't have to walk in darkness. How many people are for that? Right? Dark, I ain't interested in walking in darkness. Just not interested in it. If you are, you're probably going to stub your toe. For real. One of them middle of the night screaming kind of stub, stub, stub or stump. Some people say stump. That's a southern thing, I think. I say stub. Either way, when your toe's sticking sideways off the side of your foot, that should remind you what it feels like to walk in darkness. Don't do it, right? Hopefully I don't have to tell you that. Why? Because you'll have the light that leads to life. Listen, this idea of darkness, he also goes on and he says previously in John 1, 5, he says the light shines in the darkness. This is Christ now. He shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. So what we have to understand is that Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, but the word also says that, that this light will never be extinguished. No matter what we think it looks like, no matter how quiet God gets in our life, no matter what place you find yourself, you have to remind yourself that no matter how dark it looks, there's a light that will never, ever, ever go out. That we can trust him to be the light in our life. We spend a lot of time in John today. Let's go to John 12. Jesus goes on and he replies to some people he's talked to. He says, my light will shine for you just a little while longer. He's predicting his death now. He says, my light will shine for you just a little while longer. Walk in the light while you still can. Walk in the light while you can. So the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk, listen now, those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they're going. Put your trust in the light while there's still time. Then you'll become children of the light. Put your trust in the light while there's still time. Then you'll become children of the light. After, these, after saying these things, Jesus went away and was hidden from them. Don't miss out on that either. Like Jesus kind of lays this out before them, right? Like I'm going to be here a little while longer. You should, you should grab a hold of the light while you still can. Because if you do that, darkness won't overtake you. There's this concept that God uses between light and darkness. It's really, when you think about it, I almost wonder, is, is day and night designed solely to reveal to us what the difference is between life with God and life without it? Now, I know that we don't, we don't deal with the darkness in our current era like a lot of people do. You can go to your house and you can be in the light until you go to bed and then it's dark. Unless you want to sleep with the light on, you can do that too, right? But listen what we're talking here. We're talking middle of the night, in the woods, when there's no moon, darkness. The kind of darkness that makes the hair on your arm stand up. The kind of darkness that makes you start freaking out about every little leaf that crinkles and stick that breaks in the middle of the night. The one that makes you start uh, kind of seeing things that may or may not be there. And having fear. This is the kind of darkness that, that we talk about. When we talk darkness, and then the light being the brilliant light, the light that illuminates everything, that lets you see it clearly, and you can uh, see what is there and, frankly, what is not there. This is what Jesus is inviting us to, is to living a life that's light-filled and being light-filled or having darkness surround us 
in our mind, in our thinking, in our deeds, in our actions, in the way we process everything. Jesus is saying to us, look, get in the light. Do it while you still can. Put your trust in the light while there's still time. Then you'll become children of the light. This is where he begins to start talking about a light being being, uh, inherited or transferred. This This is really what I want us to walk away with today, to be honest with you. I want you and I to walk away with this idea that Jesus doesn't only give us eternal life. He doesn't only give us salvation. Doesn't only give us life abundant, as he talks about in his word. He doesn't only give us the promise of healing, but he promises us that he'll transfer to us, give us, his children, the light that is in him, so that we don't have to imitate each other, that we don't have to do what we view as good, but we can actually have the first message that gets whispered, this breath of life and light that can fill us. Can you imagine this now? That, that you get the first, you know, I used to love when my mom made cakes. Some of y'all have had my mom's cakes, and you know why? I was a chunky kid. But you know why I liked being home when she was making cakes? Because I got two firsts. I got the stuff off the, off the beater, right, where you get it all over your face. Oh, yeah, that's good. She'd also give me the first piece, right? And I thought, man, that's good. You, don't, you, just, you just get it. When you get it right out of the oven, it's a whole nother thing. And that's what I'm talking about is Jesus is saying, you can get this light right from me, from the original. It's not an imitation. It's not, it's not you imitating anyone else. It's, it's the, the whoosh, the light that is in Christ is transferred to us. Second Corinthians Verse four, or chapter 4, verse 5 says this. It says, you see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves. We preach that Christ is Lord, and we ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness, has made this light shine in our hearts so that we would know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Listen to this. He says, We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Now, I think it's important that we realize that whatever manufactured light that you and I can come up with, when we try to act good, it doesn't have a lasting source, and so it dims. It it can't be sustained. It runs out of power. I think think they were limited when they wrote Corinthians. Think about this. The the closest analogy he could say is, is, it's like we have this light shining in our hearts, but but we're like these clay jars. I think had they written this post-Edison, he might have changed his analogy and said, you know, there's light, but, but we're more like the bulb. We're more like this fragile little glass thing that looks like the light, but it's not the power behind the light. That, that, you, know, you can have a light bulb, but if you don't have a lamp that's plugged into a power source, it's just a little fragile piece of glass that's probably going to get broke if you try to carry it around too much. That his, his analogy about being like a clay container reminds us that for us, All we are is the fragile piece that God wants to put his power behind so that we can illuminate and we can shine his light into areas that are dark around us. Why would God put his light in you and I? Have you thought about that? Why would he spend? This is a lot of verses about this. This is a lot of effort to get this idea across in what is the most probably... Uh, smallest manual on the biggest thing, right? This is the manual on life. It's really small, if you think about it. It's very selective. But there's, these, there, there, there's a lot of talk about this light and darkness thing. 
There's a lot of talk about how God wants to put his light in us, how we become children of the light, that we bear light, and because we do that, it shows what? That we're hooked up to the, to the source. As he said, our great power is from God, not from ourselves. People were looking at the apostles when they were talking about this, and they were thinking that the apostles were the light. They were, they were setting it straight. Now look, we're not. We're more like a fragile clay pot, or in modern terms, we're more like a fragile light bulb. But when you hook us to a power source, when you hook us to the great power that, that God is, then something happens that makes our brilliance come out of us. And I want you to realize that's what God wants you to have. God wants you to have a brilliance that reflects the essence of his character. That God wants to give us this. This is not something that he says, oh, these are my favorite. I'm going to make them shine a little brighter. This is not that. Please don't think it's that. Please get this idea that we serve a God that wants to put this brilliance in you. That you could be the person that brightens the room when you walk in. You could be the person that brings God's light into every situation around you. Anybody ever met somebody who's so positive it's irritating? Come on, raise your hand. You can, this is the interactive part, right? The rest of y'all are just don't want to raise your hand. I have. Man, I, I come in and I want to complain and I want to bellyache and this person won't even join in. It's like they're living in an alternate universe, you know? I'm like, well, how was your day? This is, I'm imitating my wife if you don't get this. How was your day? Oh, not good, you know? Well, I had to deal with so-and-so. Oh, they're a great person. No, they're not a great person. Yes, they are. You just had a bad day, right? I had, I had, to, I had to talk with, with these people. Well, you know those people aren't that bad. Well, yeah, today they were. And they don't want to join in. They're bearing light. They're bringing what we would call the positive spin on it, but actually probably telling the truth. Because, you know, I've been inevitably knowingly, maybe even purposely at times, because I could be a jerk. I've been the guy that somebody had to go home and complain about. Like, my life would have been better if that guy didn't work with me, right? You, anybody been that guy, or is it just me? Thank you, sir. One on it. No, I'm just kidding. And you go like, no, I don't want to be that guy. I don't want to be the bearer of darkness. I want to be the one that bears light. It doesn't mean you got to be uh, sickeningly sweet. It doesn't mean you have to be a uh, 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 positive to the point of lying, but what if, we, what if we realize going into every moment in every situation that God put a brilliance in us, a light in us that would help reflect his character, that would help, help uh, put his voice into situations and not our own? What if we did that? What if we didn't just, ah, oh, dare I say it, what if we were good other than Sunday? Oh, what if we just took it all the way to Wednesday, you know? And it doesn't mean, I'm not saying that we're bad, but I'm just saying it's good. It's easy to be nice with you people. It's easy for you to be nice with these people. Everybody comes here. None of us have a problem. All is rosy. It's good. Just come to worship the Lord, right? This is an easy crowd. What about when you have a competing desire with somebody on Monday? What about for them to get what they want, you don't get what you want? What if there's only one buggy left at the store? And you're walking fast trying to get it. These, this is real life, right? This is where we have the chance to, to shine or not shine. It's real stuff. But if I'm imitating people, I can't keep that up. And that's where it shows up. But if I'm getting my power from God who wants to give me light, then all of a sudden, it's, it's effortless. It, it becomes easy to be the one that brings light into the situation. And for us, it's time to stop imitating and it's time to start tapping into what they call the great power of God and allow him to transfer his light into us and then let that brilliance shine everywhere we go. Does that sound daunting to you? I hope not. If it's an act, then it will be tiring. 
But if you and I can stay tuned in, if we can get this word in us, if we can remember the grace that he showed us, the mercy that he's shown us, the things that he's forgiven you for that you didn't tell anybody else, but God's forgiven you. The things that, 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 that he was understanding of when I was an absolute uh, just moron, you know, like an imbecile, a fool about an issue, and God had patience with me. The thing that I wouldn't listen to him about, and he said it over and over, and he kept sending person after person, and finally, like, should I say, the light bulb came on, right? The light came into that situation through other people. I'm grateful for every one of you who bears light. I need it. I need it. I need you to grab hold of this idea and be light. For me, personally, this is selfish. I, I need people who bear the light because it encourages me to remember the goodness of God and to see his character and to understand who he is and to want to follow him. And I would dare say we all just need it. How about that? From one another. That we don't get bogged down and get dragged into darkness, right? Matthew, in the book of Matthew, he goes on to say something that I've always loved this passage for some reason. It's in Matthew 5, and this is about, this is kind of like, okay, you got the light, what do you do with it? We'll just say it's about the position of the light. You are the light of the world. You notice he said, I'm the light of the world. Now here we are, what? You are the light of the world. Why? Because he's transferred that light into you and I. He's given us the life that is in him. You're the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that can't be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see, so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Now here we go. If he says this to us, then it's not just for us to read over and go, that's a nice idea. When he says to us that once you have the light, you're the light of the world, that it matters where that light is positioned. I heard one man say once, uh, it's like no secret service believers, right? But put your light out there. Let it shine. This doesn't mean um, what some people think it means. It simply means let the love, the grace, the mercy, the story, the life of God that has been transferred into us in, as this light, let it shine so that everybody can see it. Let it shine. It feels, to me, a bit like a command. Let your good deeds shine out for all to see. So people see this, not just in the character of God that we live out in front of him, not just in the fact that we shine light where other people might shine darkness, but he says, also in your good deeds. Also, as you get out there and you put the light in a place that's visible, then... Everyone will praise your Father in heaven. How about that? Is this hard for you? Sometimes it's hard for me. Sometimes I get busy, so, do, so busy doing things, I forget that God gave me light so that I might get out there and let it shine. You know, sometimes, if I'm being honest, I, just, I do want to put it under a basket. Now, for me, my basket is on my couch in front of my TV with my door shut. Kind of says, leave me alone, right? I'm, I'm give out. I need some time. doesn't mean you don't need time by yourself, but it, can't, it means that you can't do that all the time. You can't shut yourself away and never let the light shine that God's given you. You have to put yourself in situations, okay? It just so happens uh, that this past week I had a meeting with a lady in Goldsboro, and she threw out there an opportunity for some of us to shine a light, all right? So a lot of times we say this, and we don't give you an opportunity to follow through, but I'll give you an opportunity this morning, all right? There's a, there's a thing, many of y'all probably been to it, a lot of people in Goldsboro go, this thing called Downtown Lights Up, right? Uh, downtown on Center Street in Goldsboro, which is a beautiful place, um, they, they basically light the Christmas tree, and the whole place is full of, you know, games and vendors and stuff. Well, she said, I need some help, and I said, well, I'll see if we can get some help. 
Because I know a lot of people say, well, how can I do that? What does that look like? What, what are we going to be doing? I don't know. I just know somebody asked for help. And I said, you know what? What better people than the people that serve God to go to a place where we're lighting something up? It doesn't matter what you're doing. You could be giving directions. You could be helping them park. You could be doing whatever. But what if, what if 20 lights from the Lord's table were in our town and we were shining the light that we have? What if we went there specifically not with the purpose of doing a job, but being in a place and bearing light? What if we did that? That would be pretty cool. That's a great opportunity. It's not going to be hard. I did ask her. I said, we're going to be doing dirty jobs like that Mike Rowe guy does, like cleaning porta potties and stuff. She said, no dirty jobs. No taking out trash. No following the horses. So you don't have to worry about these. Apparently, they're going to be pretty easy jobs. They just need some help, right? But here's what you can do. Uh, I know you think maybe getting your phone out during church is bad, but not today. You can get your phone out. Text that. Text I'm in to that number. Why do we do it that way? Well, because most people have a phone. If you want to sign up and you don't have a phone, you can just uh, meet us in the back corner after service. What are we going to do? We're going to give you a, a, a quick sign-up sheet, and then as soon, because I don't even have the details yet. I'll get them next week, but it'll give us your contact info so that we can get with you. And if you're able to, you can come out and help. But here's my point. This isn't just to go help. This is an opportunity to go let this little light of mine shine, 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 right? This gives us an opportunity to go, and I'm not saying our city is a dark place, but it could use all the light it can get, right? It's easy for us to sit back and criticize everything in the world that's going on. It's not easy for us to, to, to give of ourselves and put our light in a place where it might need to shine. What if? What if? I prayed about this, and I believe that God has something in it for those of you. If, if you're thinking, yeah, that's a good idea. Don't let the enemy talk you out of it. Sometimes you've got to go with that first. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And when, he, and when you do, and you go with the intent of shining your light, I believe that that's where God does some of the miraculous things that he wants to do. Because you'll probably run into someone who could use some encouragement. You'll probably run into someone who's being uh, maybe negative, and they need a smile, and they need some encouragement. They need to remember that they came down there that night actually to have fun, to celebrate with the rest of the city. But if you want to, there's a good opportunity. Amen? I want to give you one because I don't want to just say, hey, let your light shine. I do. Tomorrow you have an opportunity. Actually, right after service you'll have an opportunity, especially if you go out to eat. Ah, you say, yeah, that's right. Right? Real quick, you're probably going to have an opportunity to let your light shine. And if you don't go out to eat, you're probably going to go out to eat. You're going to go home and eat. You've got to shine there. Shine at home. Shine at the restaurant. Shine at work. Shine downtown. Shine at church. Shine everywhere you go. Why? Because that's what he's given you. And until you begin to practice, practice being a child of the light, sometimes it's, it's tough because you're distracted. You're trying to act like a good person when he's saying, I'm giving you the light. Here it is. Live in it. Let it shine in you. Because when it shines in us and through us, then we have actually begin to live these really very real Christian lives, because we're willing to jump into darkness, because as we said, light shines in the darkness, but the darkness won't overcome it. Never be afraid to let your light shine in, in any situation, okay? Now, oftentimes we ask people if they're saved, if they want to be saved during service, but I want to use a scripture that it has a lot to do with this here. It says in John 3, it says, there's no judgment against anyone who believes in him. That's good news if you believe in him. But anyone who does not believe in him has already been judged for not believing in God's one and only son. So according to this scripture, there's two types of people. There's someone who believes that Jesus is God's son, and then there's people who don't. If you believe in him, then he says, no judgment. If you don't believe him, then there's already a judgment been made, and it says this, and the judgment is based on this fact. Listen to what he said. This is the judgment about believing and following Christ or not, and this is the magnitude of this concept of light. He says, the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world. 
but people loved darkness more than light, for their actions were evil. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see what they're doing, that they are doing what God wants. It, it really, like, it kind of floored me this week when, when he says, listen, the judgment hinges on this idea that God sent his light into the world, but people love darkness more. Listen, the goodness that is Jesus, the goodness that is the light of God that he sent into the world. Think about this. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you've been literally in the dark. I have been camping and not been able to sleep. And I remember vividly longing for the sun to just come up. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just dark and it's just cold and it's just time to get out of the dark. I remember that. And I can actually remember the feeling that I had when I made the decision to follow Jesus. It was a very similar feeling. It was a longing to get out of where I was. It was a longing to get out from under the dark, out of the weight of the sin. Like, I knew it was there. I didn't need a light to show, show me it was there. I knew where I was, and I knew I wanted out. I didn't always understand what that meant. But it's very well spelled out in the, right here in the book of John. That those who do evil hate the light. But I'm here to say this, that, that if you've been avoiding that light, if you've been avoiding life in Christ, that what he wants is for you to come into it. The reason we don't want our sins exposed is because we can't deal with them. The reason he invites us into the light is because he's already dealt with them. So what you're afraid of God seeing, he's already seen and dealt with. So you can't think of it like you and I think of it. You have to look at it through God's eyes. So if you're here this morning and you're saying, you know what, I want out of the dark. What I want is I want to be in the light. I want God to transfer that light into me. I want there to be something in me that seems to have been lacking. I want to stop imitating. I want to stop playing the part, playing the role. What I want is I want the light. Then I want to pray for you this morning. I want you to receive it. If you've never believed in him, I want you to receive him. I want you to come to that light. If you feel like maybe, hey, you're describing me when I keep trying to play this role, I actually want the real thing. I want to pray for you too. But if you want to receive Jesus, then what I want you to do is just keep that in your mind, and we want to pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. So when we dismiss, if you'd go back to that corner back here, we're going to pray for you. Just say, hey, look, I just want to pray for salvation. I want to know Jesus as my Savior. But if you're here, and this is the, this is the time where you say, you know what, I, I want something real. I vividly remember I'd been saved about five years. And I was in a place where I was exhausted from trying to be a good believer, a good follower of Christ. I was tired of trying to imitate this person and that person. I was tired of trying to power my own light, so to speak. And I came home from a hot summer's day working outside and I laid on my floor in my bedroom. I don't normally lay down when I pray. I just don't. Face down. And, and my prayer was along the lines of, God, if you don't do something, then I don't know if I can keep this up. I'm not, I don't even know. I remember saying this. I don't know what I'm asking you for. But it's something different than this. I know what it's like to try to power my own light. And one of the things that I want you to walk away with today is an understanding that God doesn't expect that of you. In his word, he says, I want to make you a child of the light. He wants to give it to us to where we can say we now have this light shining in our hearts. To where now it's, it's ours. It's, we got it firsthand. It's the first piece of cake. It's, it's, it's the first transfer. It's not a 
It's not a replica. It's not degraded. It is the light. The light of the world in us. If you want, you can raise your hand. You can not. You can just say, Lord, God knows it's before you. I just want to pray a prayer for you. Because there is nothing more exhausting than faking it or imitating other people. I believe one of the things that God wants to do is, is, is to meet you here now, to give you the light. You know if you want it. So just let me pray for you, if you guys would join in. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, God, for your promise to transfer the light of the world into us, God. You say that when we follow you, we become children of the light. God, this is your word. In your word is your will. In your word is your way. And so, Father, we just ask, God, that you would do something in us, God, that is right in line with what your word says. God, light the light in us. Help us to follow you. Help us to jump in while, while we're still able, before the time expires, God, and we can't, we can't just pretend anymore. Lord, give us a desire to follow you. Give us a, a desire to get in your word and, and to read it and to digest it and to live by it. Father, I pray for each and every person that's before you now, that they're saying to you, Lord, that they want the real light. I pray that you'll, you'll shine it down on them, God. God, that you'll fill them with it, Lord. That you'll help them to realize what it was said when, when it says that we're fragile, we're just vessels, but you're the one who powers the light in us. It's a gift. Help us walk in it, God, and help us to shine it everywhere we go. God, give us a newfound joy, a newfound ability to see things through your perspective. God, give people the miraculous gifts, God, words of wisdom and words of knowledge and understanding, Father. I pray that you would begin to operate through your people, Lord, that the light that came into this world would be transferred to us, God, and that we would walk in it every day, everywhere we go, everywhere we put our foot, let the light shine. I pray, God, that you'll do it. I believe that you're doing it. And God, I ask, Lord, that, that you just encourage your people, Lord, encourage them to love you, to follow you, to trust you, to have faith in you, God, and to know that you're the one who's worth worshiping. God, we just give you praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can you give him a hand? God is so good now. Man. Would you stand? I just want to pray over you real quick, speak a blessing over you. Remember, if you want to volunteer to text that number or stop by the back corner, if you're here for your first time, we'd love to see you back there. I pray that from the moment that you step out of these doors, that God will give you a sense that you got something here today that's either been renewed, if you already had it, maybe it'll shine a little brighter. If you never had it, you just begin to see what it's like to carry the light that is the light of the world with you everywhere you go. Father, I pray, God, that your people walk in victory and power. God, that the word is ever present before them in their hearts and minds. God, I pray, God, that you would use us as light in a dark world. God, let us shine. Let us be your voice, your feet, your hands. Let us do the good deeds in front of our neighbors and our friends so that they might give you glory in heaven. And I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good to see you guys. We'll see you next week.